Here is a grating of parallel bars. If you put a point source of waves in a flat grating, which way will the waves go? The shape of this Viking helmet is actually a clue. More of that later. We experimented with sound in microscopic gratings. Structures like this are called phononic crystals whose acoustic properties have been engineered to vary periodically in space. In the experiment, blue laser light pulses create tiny sound ripples by heating a small spot. Infrared light pulses detect the ripples. The sound pitch is very high, around 1 GHz, with amplitudes in the picometer range. We scan the detection point and change the timing of the laser pulses to make movies of the ripples using interferometry. Our grating is made of tiny copper and silica strips on a silicon slab, and this is coated with gold. We fire our laser pulses repetitively at the center of a 150 micron square area. This movie is slowed down a thousand million times. Let's analyze at different frequencies. At low frequencies, we see roughly circular ripples. Actually, this is reasonable because the sound wavelength is about 10 microns, much larger than the grating bars. So the sound effectively doesn't see the grating. But at high frequencies we see this interesting X-shaped pattern. And the X-shape closes at higher frequencies. The top row shows that we can get the same effect with numerical simulations. The bottom row is the experiment. Now let's analyze the sound wavelengths and the sound speeds in these images. There are two important spaces called k-space and group velocity space. For a given frequency in k-space, we plot the inverse of the wavelength, or rather the wave number, in the x and y directions. In group velocity space, shown on the right, we plot the speed of a sound pulse. In this approximate analytical approach, at low frequencies we get rounded shapes in both spaces. This means the ripples are roughly circular. As the frequency increases, we hit a band gap in the horizontal direction, a direction waves can't travel, visible through the opening of the circles in k-space. And this makes two circles in group velocity space. These two circles persist at higher frequencies. In k-space, waves go very strongly perpendicular to the turning points in the curves. In group velocity space, this corresponds to joining the tangents of the circles. This produces the X shape we saw. If we see all frequencies together, group velocity space looks like this. So now you see the relation with the Viking helmet. Imagine a cross section through the helmet here. It is just a circle and that gives a round ripple pattern. But if you slice the helmet at higher frequencies, that means higher up here, you get two small circles. So the waves are channeled in the direction of these two circles. This explains why the X shape closes at higher frequencies. Actually, I should rotate the axis of this helmet to correspond to experiment like this. These spiky focusing patterns are called caustics. You can find them in coffee cups and also when you generate sound waves on real crystals. So a point source in a grating produces an X pattern caused by caustics related to the band gap. This effect should also be seen in a variety of spatially periodic structures and is not just confined to sound. It would occur with electromagnetic or water waves, for example. I shall conclude by saying Tag for at du which is the Viking for thanks for listening.